Alaska may be known as the last frontier, but the state which seems like it couldn't be further from Delaware was front and center this week following State Treasurer Chip Flowers' trip there last year. That's among topics up for grabs here on State of Play. Joining us for some analysis from the law firm of Young, Conaway, Stargate and Taylor is Stephanie Hansen. And back with us again is Michael Stafford. He's a Wilmington attorney, syndicated op-ed columnist, and his work has been featured on MSNBC. So we'll set the stage here. Treasurer Flowers and his deputy used state credit cards during this conference trip they made to Anchorage last year. He says they reimbursed the state, albeit 10 months later, uh, for uh, those charges that were made during the conference and some side trips apparently. All this detailed, uh, uh, very detailed reports in the News Journal about all this. Uh, so I guess the question is, what is it about this situation that really doesn't seem to, to, to pass the smell test? It just seems it just seems f funny. I'll tell you what I think doesn't pass the smell test. I mean, when I first started reading the articles back on Sunday, it gets into very niggling detail about uh, a farmer's omelet and wheat toast and two cups of coffee and uh, uh, two orange juices or two sides of bacon. And I'm reading this going, what? So what? What is? What? I don't. I don't get this. And then you have to keep reading and reading a little bit further to find out that well, he says that he reimbursed everything. I, I'm. I think where the. I think where the story is, where the reporter is sort of leading the story, is maybe not so much about the the vast sums of money that were spent for the extra bacon and the extra orange juice, but it's the fact that there was two of them. Right and chips only one person so there's two orders of bacon and there's there's two uh apple juices hmm and then you find out his assistant's going hmm i think that what most people are thinking as they're finished reading the article isn't about this horrible vast sums of money that are being spent but is is there some hanky panky that's going on that maybe we're subsidizing as taxpayers well you find out you know, as the story has evolved, now here we are day four from Sunday's news article. He says, no, there's no hacky pang. We're not involved. I was actually, I, I was thinking the same thing myself. This whole thing doesn't smell right. So I went back and I'm going, what started this? And here's where, we, here's where I come down to. This started as sort of a, 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 an issue that was raised by someone in the state accounting office that just happened to work for the consulting firm that was managing the state's pension fund. Think back a couple of years ago, there was this brouhaha between Chip Flowers and the state's uh, pension fund about the investment, how that money was being spent, and there were these two entities that were sort of um, unhappy with each other and going back and forth. The now, battle of control between the two. The battle of them. control. Mm -hmm. And so now we flip forward two years from now, and we've got the same folks involved, but it's on Chip is spending extra money for two cups of coffee and two orders of bacon. That's where I think things don't smell right. Is that where you see it, Mike? Well, I take a bit of a different view. I mean, look, everybody loves a good scandal. It's a particularly one that has some salacious hints and details. And here we are in Delaware. We have, you know, relatively scandal-free politicians, by and large, at this point. And now we've got Glacier Gate. We've got the Denali denial. You know, it's it's got all the juicy elements of a wonderful story. The boss and the deputy. There's even a bear. There's a Canadian-style omelet, I guess, or a farmer's omelet. What more could you ask for? I, I think Mr. Flowers' problem is you can't position yourself as the champion of transparency, as the people's treasurer, and then fail to be transparent. And, and he's gotten himself sort of twisted around, I think, in the various stories and, and the various denials. I think most of us suspect that there was some sort of relationship going on with this deputy, uh, Ms. Brenner. It, it certainly looks that way. But this scandal, I mean, if this was a, if this was a isolated incident, if this was standalone, um, it might not warrant the, the sort of attention that it's received because he did ultimately, although albeit months later, you know, reimburse the state for um, the expenses related to the trip. But it's this plus Brenner's other issues with the state credit card, the Patriots game, um, the, the, the other charges that have come out. And what you start to see there is a pattern of, you know, living on the taxpayer's dime. I mean, it, 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 when, when I look at Mr. Flowers and I, and I think about, you know, he did reimburse the state. But he did it months later. And so what that basically is, at least to me as a taxpayer in Delaware, is a loan. It's a loan from the taxpayers for a period of time to pay for that expense 
with many months later the reimbursement coming in. And when you look at the dates on when uh, he was reimbursing the state, it's right when the mess with Brenner and the credit card really was, was beginning to bubble up as a scandal. So I'm wondering if this would have happened if the public's attention hadn't already been drawn onto the spending practices of his deputy. Does it raise a red flag for somebody who's in the position of, you know, it's not like, you know, it's not like he's the lieutenant governor. He's the treasurer, somebody who's sort of supposed to be in charge of, you know, managing money right for him to pay back as late as he did. Is, is that sort of a red flag for somebody, especially in his position? Well, I think it definitely is. I mean, you expect more transparency and fiscal responsibility from somebody in the treasurer's office. Uh, but it's a double-edged sword. I mean, one of the best things I think Chip has going for him right now is that he is the treasurer, and it's a down-ballot race. And as much as those of us who are interested in politics talk about these things and are familiar with the scandals, um, the, the average voter on Election Day probably isn't going to know the details or, or care. They're not going to know um, were there two people in the room? Was there one? What did they order for breakfast? Who rented the car? Who paid for the valet? Uh, I, I, so I think that's something that's going to ultimately, at least at this point, uh, protect them a little bit as well. Well, that sort of brings us to, to our next question. Uh, you know, Chip's a very uh, charismatic guy. We know him kind of well around here. He used to sort of be in, in your shoes as a political analyst here for us at WHYY. Uh, does this have an impact on his long-term long -term future. He's, I don't think it's, it's uh, conjecture to say he's somebody who is ambitious and, and, and wants to, to, to move up. Uh, does, does this hinder that? I think it does. I, and that's the problem when you go on these state conferences. I mean, we, we want our elected officials and our folks on boards and commissions to do the state conferences because they do bring back information and things that are good for, the, for, for our state. But any time you go to those conferences and you bring a spouse or you do the extra things that you can do and you put any of that stuff on a state credit card, um, you're just opening yourself up for a world of hurt, which I think is what has happened here. Even if you eventually repay it all back, it just opens it up to a big investigation. And few people are gonna remember the outcome of it. Few people are gonna remember he did he did reimburse. Few people are going to remember, well, yeah, the, uh, the deputy assistant was let go. They're going to remember something happened and it wasn't quite right and he was involved. So this will represent a bump that he's going to have to get over, which is where I get back to, there's something about this doesn't smell right. Why would somebody want to make such a big deal out of, out of all of this um, when the details, I mean, for uh, two orange juices as opposed to one and two things of bacon and the, the rental car was, all, was supposed to go, you know, it was for 560 miles, but the round trip was only 280 miles to the park. I mean, police, this is, the niggling detail has approached the ridiculous. And when that happens, there's something else afoot. That's all I'm going to say. So the GOP now uh, kind of calling for an investigation into all this. Uh, another former state of play uh, participant, Charlie Copeland, now the, the head of the state GOP, uh, licking his chops at this point, or does the Republicans do the Republicans need to find somebody to run against Chip at this point, uh, which is which is going to be uh, has been a challenge to find statewide candidates. I think that's going to be the challenge. I mean, yeah. when you when you look at um, Chip versus Colin Benini. Colin, in what was a very democratic year here, even with the, 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 the albatross of Christine O'Donnell around his neck, performed, outperformed the rest of the statewide ticket. But Colin is a very different kind of conservative. He's definitely a, a, a to, the, to, the, to the right side of the party, but he's a big personal bull, teddy bear, wonderful guy, um, connects with audiences and with people. He's not a, uh, a scary conservative. If the Republican Party, whoever the Republican Party runs, I mean, the treasurer's race is gonna be, I think, a focus of effort because Chip is now the wounded Democrat in the bunch. He's probably the easiest to take out. There's a suspicion that he may face a primary that could leave him even more damaged um, going into the general election. But it's hard to get people's attention for, for a race that's that far down ballot. You, you better have a really good candidate. They can't be I think uh, if they have, if they want to have a chance at winning here in Delaware, they can't be from the far right fringe of the party. Um, but at the same time, if you run a, uh, if you run somebody, somebody from who could be painted as elitist, I think that almost plays into Chip's sort of you know man of the people, little guy versus big business. I mean, it 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 it, it gives him a more winnable fight. So identifying a candidate and then. To me, I would want to know who are the candidates up at the top of the ticket going to be? Because if it's people of the same caliber, 
um, that we've seen, you know, certainly in the last election cycle, um, folks who would normally fill out a third party's ballot, it's, it's going to be it's going to be trouble for them no matter who they run. All right, we'll leave it there. Uh, thank you very much, Stephanie Hansen and Michael Stafford. We appreciate you being here.